So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where Europe goes into total war. Now I have done a total war video or two before, but that was focused on the entire world. But today we're focusing in on only Europe. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let's go ahead and get started. Also, make sure to check out the merch link to it in the description at adismerch.com. Get it before it's gone. It's going to be gone by the end of March. 100k celebration exclusive stuff is there. Play buttons back there. Pretty cool. Posted a video on that on Thursday. Anyway video now for the sake of this video i'm not going to be including russia or any of the caucus countries or turkey because i feel like those are like borderline europe they're not 100 european although they do have european parts but like with russia i would say a majority of their country is over here in asia although a majority of their population is in europe and then with turkey you know a majority of them are over here in asia and a small bit is in europe so uh it's gonna look something like this there's a rough draft of the countries that will be involved and of course iceland too and the two sides in this video are going to be germany and of course poland for comedic effect these two countries are going to be going to war and i'm going to try to base it off of current day relations so for example poland has a good outline known as hungary and germany is pretty close to the uk so from here i will be adding more countries accordingly so uh ukraine for example is close with poland and belarus is an enemy of poland therefore they'll join germany i'd say the baltics are most likely going to stick together here and i see them going to the red team now i know poland lithuania did kind of exist i was going to say not too long ago but it was pretty long ago but present day relations between poland and lithuania would kind of permit such a union from taking place again and i don't think they would want to be on the same team but at the same time I'm not 100 sure because the baltics are always just chilling but there we go we have the baltics and finland situated ireland of course would never join on the same side as the uk whereas iceland would probably most of the time do so i think denmark would rather be smart than stupid and they would join in on the red team but with that they would automatically bring sweden into the blue team because of their rivalry and with sweden on the blue team we have germany on the red team now this may not be 100% accurate, and if it isn't, don't yell at me because I know. It's impossible to make these things 100% accurate, and it's best just to go off of what kind of makes sense, as opposed as to like 5 to 10 hours of research. I'm not going to do that, I have other things to do. There's other things, I don't want to do them, trust me, I'd rather do YouTube full time, but it, that's too much time, I can't, I'm sorry. But what I can do is just use my knowledge that I have now, which is fairly extensive, to put together the most accurate teams that I think are possible. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and put Serbia and Albania on the same team because they're obviously very close countries. And of course, Kosovo is as well. That was a joke. But in regards to these guys, this is gonna be very interesting because I think I'm gonna put Romania on the blue team with Moldova. I'll also throw Serbia on the blue team, which is going to go ahead and activate the entire Balkan area with Bulgaria going to the blue team. Greece going to the blue team, Montenegro going over to the blue team, and the remainder of the Balkan countries going over to the red team. All right, the Balkans are now situated. Now we get over here to kind of Central Europe. Slovenia, I don't necessarily know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put Austria on the red team. Also put Czechia on the red team. And then we'll put Slovakia on the blue team. Italy will join the red team. And then that's going to force Slovenia to go to the red team. I think realistically France would join the red team. But since this is a fictional scenario and because I want to balance it out a little bit, Let's go ahead and put France on the blue team. Switzerland, though, they're going to the red team. And now for the Benny Lux, we'll put Luxembourg and Belgium in on the blue team. And then we'll finally have the Netherlands going over to the red team because they're more German than they are French, whereas these guys are more French than they are German. So now we just have Iberia, Portugal, and Spain. Of course, Portugal is going to go to the red team because of England or the UK. I keep saying England in these videos. I'm going to get, I'm going to get assassinated one day. It's not going to be fun. But we'll have Spain going over to the blue team, because why not? Now we have ourselves a pretty balanced out team. I would give the edge to the... Mm, actually, I'm not sure. The blue team could very easily... This is actually pretty balanced. Uh, obviously, Kaliningrad isn't colored in here because it is a part of Russia, and Russia is not participating in this video. We just have the main 100% European countries. So, let the fighting begin. The UK swiftly takes over all of Ireland because there's nobody there. From here, Germany enters into Poland in orderly fashion, and we have the takeover of all of Albania, North Macedonia, and Kosovo. We see Spain enter into Portugal and take over a large portion of the country, and Hungary and Slovakia start a campaign into Austria and these guys. So, the fighting has begun. And right now, evenly split, blue team might have a little bit of a push here. But that is because the blue team has a more geographical advantage. The red team is kind of spread out all over the place, whereas the blue team is mostly just in one blob over here in Eastern Europe, and then the other blob over here in Western Europe, and then there's also Sweden. Hey, speaking of Sweden, the Finns are here. They're going to make their way along with the Norwegians to take over all of Northern Sweden. Yes, I know mountains exist. We're ignoring that. And they're going to get down to the more populated areas where the Swedish army is going to hold them off. Speaking of the Swedish army, they're going to push over here into, into Norway and start to threaten their capital 
capital of Oslo, while also crossing over and down into Copenhagen in order to threaten that capital city. Ukraine starts their invasion of Belarus, and the Italian troops fly over the mountains and invade into France. They also take Corsica, and we have Spain finishing off Portugal. Also, in regards to the 100,000 subscriber specials, I will be getting them up sometime within the next the late month early april i don't have time i just don't have time to do it i don't have motivation to do it um i want to try to post them as non like wednesday to saturday videos just so the channel doesn't die when i post those videos we get there when we get there i guess there's still the room tour video to go and then there's the what i use to make these videos video to go okay back to war because war is fun the british navy manages to beat out the french navy and that leads to a landing over here in normandy germany sees this they decide to kind of stall out in poland and focus on france instead they blitzkrieg through belgium and luxembourg and down into france they're even able to take on Alsace Lorraine. And from here, a small and very costly push takes place into France. Spain is now removing some of their troops from Iberia and pushing them up into France in order to hold out the front line. So that will be helping out France here in a little bit. But for now, they are getting invaded. Back over here in the Balkans, we have the blue team wiping out. Oh, that was Bosnia. Well, yes, they do wipe out Bosnia. And they basically sink into the ocean because they're now, they're now blue. I cannot speak. Croatia is next and then Slovenia. And now the blue team has themselves one solidified front line along here with germany czechia austria and italy also belarus and the baltics but they don't really count they're not relevant the polish are now able to make a pretty significant counter advance as they have the germans pretty much back to their border back over here in france we have the spanish arriving and they help out in pushing back the red team they meet up with switzerland and eventually meet up with luxembourg and reliberate the country in central europe we have the powers pushing back against the blue team up north we have the Finns making offensive in the stockholm and successfully capturing the capital city of sweden from here the swedish troops start to kind of fall back to the coast norway is able to push out the swedes from their country and now we have a stalemate between the swedish defensive front and the other baltic or balk baltic wait nordic countries belarus gets their capital yanked from them which leads them to kind of fall back as well poland starts their own advance into belarus and this country is eventually forced to surrender which leads to the advance into the baltics which finland is quick to kind of reinforce at this point the uh the tide has kind of changed in this war with the blue team getting on the front on the advance here and things look to be uh continuing to go that way sweden eventually surrenders over and that's going to be a pretty big loss for the blue team who was just looking to have things going better for them but now finland and norway are starting their troops to mainland europe the red team is able to re-push into these territories which were taken from them if i can get the right color there we go and france is once again in jeopardy with germany making a little bit of a tug towards paris the poles are able to re-push out the germans and from here they start an invasion in the czechia which goes absolutely amazing as they take over the entire eastern half of the country with this we also have the austria's capital being lost and now it's just not looking good over here in the central area of europe with the blue team taking over the capital of Austria, taking over all of Slovenia, and even pushing out and capturing Prague. This causes Czechia to surrender, as well as Austria, and the red team might be in trouble now. Ukraine now starts to send some of his troops over to here, and they do still focus on the Baltics, but it's really not a priority. I mean, they capture uh, Lithuania's capital. And with the fall of Riga, we have the surrender of Lithuania and Latvia, and they have no interest going into Estonia. Over in France, we have the capturing of Paris. Now, this is a huge development for the red team, as they've just knocked out probably the strongest country on the blue team. With their capital gone, they start to slip up and think about surrendering, but Spain's like, don't do that because it's not World War II anymore. France is like, okay, yeah, you're true, you're right, you are correct. Let's not surrender. Why does this look so familiar? Anyway, the Poles are in Germany. Yeah, that's not good. They're actually right next to Berlin, which causes Germany to kind of yoink some of its troops back to the mainland in order to protect their eastern front. We have the Balkans entering into Italy to get themselves some revenge. They take over Venice. And now they start to kind of crumble into Italy as Italy, uh, well, Italy does the unthinkable they switch sides and now the red team's disgusted i mean germany's really disgusted because this is like the second time this has happened to them but with italy joining in on the blue team those troops that were invading are automatically converted over to a red team troop or blue team troops now the red team is in a little bit of trouble i mean the blue team also is in trouble because they can't invade this but the red team specifically because the blue team's entering in from bavaria now berlin just got captured that's not good Estonia just got captured. Finland sees itself out of the war. The Swedish government re-exists itself. France re-exists itself. The Benny Lux get on Blitzkrieged. And the Polish, Ukrainians, and all these guys are making their way across Germany until eventually they capture Frankfurt. And that is the last straw for Germany as they surrender over to the blue team. This causes Switzerland to make the right decision and surrender. Denmark surrenders. Norway surrenders, even though they probably shouldn't have done that. Now it's just the UK and Iceland. Uh, uh, just the UK. And they're like, okay, here's the deal. We're going to keep Ireland and we will let you do whatever you want. And the blue team is going to agree to those terms. So let's go ahead and take a look at this peace treaty. All right.
right, let's take a look at these horrible borders that I've just drawn up. This is disgusting and I want to end myself. Right, anyway, the UK gets to keep Ireland as promised. We have Spain annexing all of Portugal. France manages to give themselves a little slither of Germany and a lot of Switzerland. Italy is, um, well, they don't really lose any land, but they are forced to give up all of Sardinia over to France. We have the Balkans becoming absolutely disgusting. This weird thing happens over here with Slovenia and Croatia uniting into one union. Germany, Austria, and Czechia unite into a union because honestly, like, it looks something like this, and obviously this can't really survive on its own. Austria was probably fine, but they wanted that, you know, that sweet German union, so they united together with that. And everybody gets a little bit of land here who bordered an enemy. Uh, I know Romania and Hungary were working on the same team. That was weird. Let's ignore that. Uh, we have Ukraine and Pol Poland splitting up Belarus and the remainder of Belarus does as it always does and goes over to Russia. Latvia and Estonia got away with that one and the Nordic or uh, yeah the Nordic region is left alone because Finland left the war. Sweden kind of got captured but then uncaptured itself and Norway didn't do much so nothing really happens up here. They all chill out and Denmark is sad because nothing happened for them. Probably for the best though. And Europe looks horrible. So what's going to happen? Well, a giant tidal wave is going to come through and sink the entire European continent into the ocean. Oh yeah, a lot better now. Actually, it's probably better if we just do that as well. Sink that into the ocean. Maybe, maybe one over here. Sink that. Definitely sink this into the ocean and that. Um, let's, uh, let's get rid of that. There's still some of that up there. It's, uh, it's fine. I didn't get rid of that. Just the cartels and stuff. But then there's a lot of wars up there and stuff going on over here. Always something happening there. Let's just do that. And then the, the, this and that. The Falklands. Let's just, yeah. And then Australia. Yeah, it's spiders and stuff. So uh, the New Zealand. Yeah. This is a good world. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We are aiming for a certain amount of subscribers in a certain amount of time. Those numbers are not known. I don't even know them, but subscribing is cool. We want to get ourselves as gold one of those one day. No matter how many years it takes, we should get one. That would be pretty cool. Once again, thank you guys for everything. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to check out the merch memberships. If you're interested speaking in memberships, here are the members. Thank you to all the super fans. This includes Yo Moma Moma, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Kylie Speaks Plays, Maddox Score, Poland Country Ball, Dimitri, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, DW Cool Dude, All About Military, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.